Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing centralizers and normalizers. Okay, right, so we've just been discussing centralizers, and before we move on to normalizers, what I would like to do is just add a few more little points uh, with regards to centralizers. Okay, the first is re with regards to what if the group that we're working in is an abelian group, because then centralizers uh, actually become the entire group. So I'd just like to mention that. And the next one uh, is with regards to the centralizer of an element in a group, capital G. Okay, right. Uh, so firstly, let me talk about the centralizer of a subset capital A in an abelian group. So let's now say that G is abelian. Okay, so it's a commutative group. It's the case that if you take any two elements of the group, so let's say we've got little g1 and little g2, okay, and this is for all arbitrary little g1 and little g2 are elements of the group. Um, if you compose those two elements together, so if you take g1 composed with g2, then it's the same as if you compose them the other way around, so if you take g2 composed with g1, okay, so it really does not matter what way you compose them, basically, what way around you compose them, it does not matter. Okay, so that's what it means uh, for the group to be abelian. Okay, now let's consider then the centralizer of a subset capital A in the group capital G. Okay, now let me just remind you of the definition of this. Remember, this is all the elements of the group. So all little g is an element of capital G, such that when you conjugate any element of the subset uh, little a, um, which is an element of the subset capital A, uh, by this element little g, it gives you that element back again. So it's equal to little a for all little a is an element of capital A. Okay, now if we are working in the beating group, what we can do when we conjugate one element of the group by another is just interchange the order that we're doing this in. Okay, so if we consider what is g a g inverse, okay, I know little a is an element of the subset capital A, but all of these elements here are elements of the group capital G, okay, so they commute with one another. So what we can quite simply do is swap around g and a here and turn this into a g, okay, and of course now what happens is we've got the g here, next to the g inverse, so those two are going to cancel with one another to produce the identity. So basically this is going to equal little a, no matter what little a and what little g you pick from within the group. My arguments here work for any elements, little a and little g, in the entire group, okay? So conjugation of one element, little a of the group, by another element, little g of the group, has absolutely no effect if capital G is an abelian group. So what this means is that if we have capital G in the abelian group, so let's just draw the picture here, so if capital G, which I will colour in in red here, uh, is an abelian group, then if we take any subset, capital A here, so let's put capital A here, okay, and generate the centralizer of this subset, capital A, in the group, capital G, then it's actually going to be equal to all the elements of the group, because all of the elements of the group will actually satisfy this condition. Okay, so if I take an arbitrary element of the group, little g, and consider what the con little g conjugate of any of the elements of this subset capital A is, it will be the case that g a g inverse is equal to little a for all little a is an element of this subset capital A, and that will hold true for all the elements of the group, because as I say, conjugation has absolutely no effect in an abelian group. All these elements of this subset capital A are in the group capital G. Okay, so when I conjugate them by another element of the group capital G, it has absolutely no effect on them. Okay, so in an abelian group then, the centralizer of the subgroup cap sorry, of the subset capital A in the group capital G is in fact equal to the entire group. Okay, so it's a little bit trivial if we're working in an abelian group. It's more interesting, it's a much more interesting concept if we're working in a non-abelian group where conjugation has a non-trivial meaning. Okay, right, so that's if we're working in an abelian group. 
The final thing that I want to say in this video about centralizers uh, relates to the centralizers of um, single elements, okay, so the centralizer of a single element of the group in the group capital G. Okay, right, so what I want you to consider then is what if we took a subset, capital A, of the group capital G that contained only one element of the group capital G. So what if we took the centralizer of the subset that contains a single element which we'll call little a uh, in G, basically. Okay, so drawing a picture for this, here we have our group, and now our subset's very small and just contains a single element of the group, and that element of the group is going to be little a here. Okay, so let's think about what happens to the definition of the centralizer of this subset in the group G when this subset only contains a single element of the group. Okay, so now what will the definition of this be? The definition of this will be all elements of the group, once again, so all little g is an element of the group capital G, such that when I conjugate this element little a by the element little g, so when I take g a g inverse, this is equal to little a. And now I don't need to add for all little a is an element of capital A because there's only one element in this set, and that is little a. So this just becomes all elements of the group, which when you conjugate little a by those elements, give you little a back again. Okay, so this is what's known as the centralizer of a single element, little a, in the group capital G. And it's not usually written in this way. Usually people drop the set notation and they just write the centralizer of the element little a in the group capital G. Okay, so this is the centralizer of a single element of the group now. Okay, and this then is the definition. So just talking you through what the definition actually intuitively means, it means go through absolutely all the elements of the group and ask what is G A G inverse. So what is the conjugate of little a by this element little g? Okay, and if the answer is that it doesn't do anything, that the answer is little a, then stick that element little g into this set and go on and continue on through all the elements of the group collect up the elements that fix little a when they conjugate it, uh, and that's going to be the centralizer of this element little a in the group capital G. Okay, and of course that's also a subgroup, because after all this is just a centralizer of a subset of capital G um, in the group capital G. Okay, so the arguments that we had before for the more general subset apply just as well here as they did there. Okay, so uh, that's the last little thing that I want to talk about centralizers. Okay, so now let's move on to the very much so related but slightly more complicated concept of a normalizer of A and G. And we're going to find that um, normalizers of subsets capital A in the group capital G are also subgroups of the group capital G, but we're going to find it slightly more difficult to prove that the normalizer of a subset capital A in the group capital G is actually a subgroup. Okay, so normalizers then. Okay, so again the things that we need are exactly the same. So what we need is a group capital G, and I'll draw this same picture again. So here we have our group capital G, and I'll colour this in in red as usual, and then we need a set which I'll call capital A, which is inside of our group capital G. So here is our set capital A, and I'll colour this in in green here. Okay, right. So, again, this subset does not need to be any special kind of subset. It can be any subset you like initially. We'll talk in a uh, little while about what happens if this subset capital A is in fact a subgroup of capital G. Then the concept of the normalizer actually becomes a little bit more interesting, uh, but we'll come back to that later on. Okay, uh, the definition of the normalizer works no matter what this subset capital A is equal to. So now what we're going to talk about is the normalizer of the subset capital A in the group capital G. Okay, so just writing out how you say this, uh, this symbol here means uh, the normalizer of the subset capital A in the group capital G. 
OK, and I will colour code it in in turquoise here. So what then is the definition of the normaliser of a subset capital A in the group capital G? Well this once again is a subset of the elements of the group, OK, so it's all little g is an element of the group capital G, such that when I conjugate any element of the subset capital A by uh, this element little g, OK, so if I take some little a from my subset capital A and conjugate little a by this element little g, so just adding these onto the picture, so here is little g, it's just an arbitrary element of the group, and I'm now conjugating this element of my subset capital A by little g, this has to now be an element of the set capital A. So this is a slightly different definition than what we saw for centralizer. Okay, it's slightly less strict than centralizer. Centralizer said that for all elements, oh, and I've missed that bit off. Okay, so let me just add a little bit in here. And this needs to be true for all little a is an element of capital A. That's very, very important. OK, so let's contrast this to the definition of the centralizer of the subset capital A in the group capital G. So the definition of the centralizer was that it was all elements of the group which when you conjugate uh, an element of this subset capital A by that element of the group, you get that same element of the subset capital A back again. So G A, G inverse had to equal little a for all little a is an element of capital A. Here we are being less strict. We are saying that you have to be able to go through all of the elements of the subset capital A, conjugate them by this element little g, and not necessarily get little a back again, but get another element in the subset capital A back again. So when I conjugate any element of this subset capital A by uh, this element little g, it has to be the case that it will give you an element back within the subset. So it could be a different element within the subset, but it has to be back within this subset, basically. OK, so it has to stabilise the subset, capital A, under conjugation. OK, so to really spell this out, the way that you would construct this thing is you'd go through every element of the group, OK, and you'd ask uh, for each element of the group, uh, you'd go through all the elements of the set capital A and you'd ask, uh, when I conjugate this element of the set capital A by this element little g, does it give me another element of the set capital A? And if that the answer is yes for all elements of the set capital A, then you stick that element of the group into this set that's going to form the normalizer of the uh, subset capital A in the group capital G. OK, so that's the definition then of the normaliser of this subset capital A in the group capital G. OK, so the first thing to say is that the centraliser of the subset capital A in the group capital G is in fact a subset of the normaliser of the subset capital A in the group G. So what I'm saying is that all the elements from the centraliser of the subset capital A in the group capital G are actually elements of the normaliser of the subset capital A in the group capital G. And I hope that should be pretty obvious, because this is a stricter definition than this, OK? If you've got an element of the group that's in here, it means that if you use that element to conjugate any element of the subset capital A, it gives that same element of the subset of capital A back again. OK, now that, it certainly then sends every element of this subset capital A back onto an element in the subset capital A, which is the definition that that element of the group needs to obey to be in the normaliser of the subset capital A in G. OK, so any element that's good enough to be in the centraliser of A, A in G is good enough to be in the normaliser of A in G. OK, so that's the first thing to note, that the centraliser of A in G is in fact a subset of the normaliser of A in G. Now, what that tells us straight away, then, is that the identity element is going to be within the normaliser of A in G, because the identity element of the group capital G was always in the centraliser of A in G, so it's certainly, then, in the normaliser of A in G. OK? 
now you might be guessing what claim is going to come next. Okay, and indeed it is coming. This subset of G, the normalizer of A and G, it's a special subset. Once again, it's a subgroup of capital G. It's a subcollection of the elements of capital G, and it's a very special subcollection of the elements of capital G because it actually obeys the axioms of group theory on its own. Uh, it is, in fact, a subgroup of the group capital G. Okay? Uh, and our next challenge then is to actually prove that the normalizer of the subset capital A in the group capital G is, in fact, a subgroup of capital G. Okay, but I think we will have a break here and we'll do that proof in the next video.